Hi everyone, it's Pat here and today I am working on a painting for a group show at the Art on Ninth Gallery in Invermere. We've been invited to interpret a photograph and I previously did a study and it, you can find that video. I will link it in the cards for you. So I decided to interpret it as a long, narrow panel. And I started this canvas, it's a 16 by 40, and I painted it first red. And I did um, block it in, unfortunately I didn't have my camera on when I did that. But you can see the block in, and on the right hand side I have my study that I'm using as a reference, rather than using the photo reference now. So I'm just using a um, color shaper brush here. I like using these to stay nice and loose. So it has a silicone blade on it and they come in various sizes. This is about a one and a half inch brush. I use it across mediums as well. It works very well with cold wax and oil as well as acrylic. So when I first start to uh, block in my painting, I like to focus on the bigger shapes and I'm not really worried about refining anything at this stage. I actually like to try and stay loose throughout the whole painting, which can become very difficult. So I'm working on the sky and trying to get a lot of movement in the clouds. One of the things I really want to focus on in this larger piece is the texture at the bottom of the foreground of the painting. I am working wet on wet. Here it is not drying, so I'm blending my colors as I go, getting some optical mixing going on. And this, of course, won't be the only time I paint the sky. I don't try for perfection on the first go. I'm just really trying to capture the essence of the feeling of the landscape and the mood that I'm picking up from it. So because I haven't been at this particular location, I'm really just relying on information I read about it. And it is uh, painted potholes. Uh, so it's just a very interesting area with this uh, really bright kind of gold tones in the landscape. I'm putting on some texture gels here. I used a variety of texture gels, one being a sand gel. I use crackle paste, black lava, various things to give it a lot of texture in the foreground. So again, I'm just trying to establish my shapes and get some of the color from the sky in the foreground as well. That's really important so that the painting is feeling cohesive from the top to the bottom. I find painting longer vertical paintings a little more challenging uh, with the landscape than I do a horizontal format. But I do like having a challenge and I think having this longer format offers an opportunity for collectors to find a painting that will fit in areas that they don't need a big wall space. So it could be a, a return on a wall or the end of a hallway uh, works nice. Here you see me using the wider color shaper and I'm lightening up the area there just under the tree line. I'm using a hairbrush roller curler thing to scratch some marks in that would kind of indicate uh, the feeling of growth in this area. Kind of 
coming back in with some lighter color to bridge the two areas together and adding some darks in I'm using my brush on the side and now I've gone back to the color scraper and I'm adding this um, dairy lide or sometimes called airy lide depending on the brand yellow which is quite intense I like to uh, think of it almost like a orange yellow it reminds me of orange marigolds to some degree uh, that's what it makes me think about but there was a lot of yellow in the photo reference again working on the whole painting bringing some movement into this area with the finer brush and adding some marks there is the trees tend to turn white so i'm just trying some different things here to stay loose using that brush roller again i've added some mauve color So I want them to feel like trees, but not be painted in. And I got a little bit carried away there, wiping some of it off and going back to obliterate it again. I didn't really find that very satisfying. So just covering it up with some opaque paint that's been mixed with some of the yellow. And I will put those tree forms back in again. So that area is going to have to dry. I will work down here while that's happening. And I'm trying to bridge the gap a bit between the colors there on the painting. Going back into the tree area. Again, using the scraper um, brush, the silicone color shaper and just bringing some paint down giving it a little bit of shadow so throughout my painting i always keep adding and subtracting uh, till i get the final result because i'm not trying to copy a picture and make this perfect i'm really trying to get the essence. You can view the group show on the Art on Ninth website and see how all the artists interpreted the painting from abstract to quite realistic. My painting has sold but there are others to choose from. So go and take a look at Art on Ninth website and check that group show out. I am using a palette knife now and I think it's important to go from tool to tool to get some different marks and just keep a variety going. If we keep one brush in our hand all the time our marks are going to look very similar I'm adding some brighter colors down here so I was using some burnt sienna and uh, red oxide as well as um, burnt oranges the airy light yellow the cerulean blue I mixed all my greens uh, I normally don't use green from a tube. I brought out the bamboo skewer here and I'm just dipping it in some paint and pushing that around to give it a little bit of marks and movement. 
So not everything has to be done in detail or with a brush. But I am using a brush now, extending some of my trees up the mountain, adding a little bit of light to them on one side as if the sun is hitting them. I'm doing a glaze on this part now, and uh, I've used some quinacridone nickel azo gold, which I've been informed that is no longer being made due to the pigment not being available. So we're going to have to find a workaround for that. And if you look on uh, Golden's website, they do have some instructions on how to make something similar by using, I believe it was um, red sienna and yellow oxide. So um, you can check that out on Golden's website if you're addicted to this quinacridone nickel azo color as I am. It makes a great glaze color and here I'm using the brush roller curler thing to kind of make some marks and movement. By building up a lot of layers in a painting, it gives it great uh, depth, which you just can't get if you paint an area in with one color or tone. So I really do like building up the depth. And now I'm back on the sky area, adding a bit of darker area in, blending that off. Now with acrylic paint, it's so much harder to blend than with oil paint. So you can definitely add a medium, a blending medium uh, to keep it open longer so that you have more time to blend. You can use various types of brushes as well to keep it soft. Uh, try a rag, even a sponge, just to soften off those clouds. So don't limit yourself just to the use of brushes and try different means and ways of applying your paint and taking your paint off. Think about edges when you're working that you want to have some soft edges that just go away, kind of like a lost edge where it blends into the next edge. And you also like to have some harder edges in your paintings. This provides contrast, which is an important aspect in art. So here you see me putting some movement in, trying to get loose and having some little white kind of marks going through. Now coming back into the mountain and using a color shaper. For my neutral tones, I tend to mix up a big batch in advance so that I don't have to keep mixing my colors. I use freezer paper most often as my palette and I just put it right over top my table. This way I can have quite a large surface area to mix on. And I also keep some of my paint in an oversized ice cube tray that I can seal up and it keeps fresh in there. That saves me having to continually squeeze out from the tube. Trying to define some of these shapes in the mountain, but yet give it the, the appearance of perhaps um, snowy areas or lighter 
tree areas in a distance. Normally when I paint landscapes, I paint very intuitively just from imagination. And so I find it a little more challenging to interpret an actual photograph and make it my own painting rather than following the photograph too much. Uh, this is why on this painting I did a study and then use my study as my photo instead of going to the actual camera photo. This is a smaller color shaper brush. Now I'm using a finer detail brush to just bring in a little bit of dark and bring the stems of these, sorry, the trunks of these trees down further into the landscape. I tend to paint quite fast when I first start uh, blocking in and as I get near the end I definitely slow down. I start looking at my painting a lot more which you don't actually see in the video because I've cut those areas out but I do spend a lot of time looking to make my final uh, adjustments and that's basically what's happening now is I'm, I'm starting to clarify and refine the final landscape. Putting some shadow parts under some of my rock shapes, using a rag to wipe some of that off. So I'm going to put that in again. If you're visiting British Columbia and you're in the Kootenai area, you may want to visit the Kootenai National Park where these paint pots exist. The paint pots are formed by an accumulation of iron oxide that bubbles up from the mineral springs. This makes the water mildly acidic and full of minerals, zinc, manganese, and lead. This creates a colorful landscape. It's also impossible for the trees to thrive in that, and that's why you see that them dead and turned white. These were called First Nations pigments as the First Nation people collected the pigments from the ochre beds. They were able to get red ochre paint since ancient times. Now you see the orange colored pools between the grasses. At the turn of the 20th century, settlers started to mine the pigments and they were carried to the train by horse and buggy where they were transported to Calgary to be used for manufacturing paints. In 1920, the area was designated as the new Kootenai National Park and at that time the mining stopped. Today there is trails that you can walk on and see the paint pots and the ochre beds and all the beautiful color that the minerals have created. So if you get a chance and you're in the area of the Kootenays 
in British Columbia, Canada, check out the paint pots at the Kootenai National Park. I myself haven't visited the park, although I've driven through the area on several occasions. But definitely the next time I go, I will be going to take the hike, which I understand is quite easy. There's a great website if you want to get more information and you want to read up more on the history of the paint pots. So they are definitely in other areas uh, as well. If you're in the US, the Yellowstone National Park is another area with the same occurrence of paint pots. I have had the opportunity to explore that on a couple of occasions and it really uh, fills my senses. I super enjoyed the scenery and the color and the textures formed by the minerals in the um, underlying bed. So that's a little bit of history for you and I'm finishing up this painting by tweaking it now and just putting in little bits of color here and there using the bamboo skewer again to push some of that around putting a little bit of lines with the skewer that I've dipped in paint now I'm using this Liquitex um, brush creative brush and I put some white very liquid paint on it high flow paint you could use acrylic ink and I'm just spattering there's always a lot of this white alkali in these areas and that's what I'm trying to create here. So just going back in, adding some more highlights blending it around a bit. This is the area where I'm just constantly um, tweaking and really focusing on the texture and the foreground now, adding some of that brighter cerulean blue in. I guess they call it manganese. I use cerulean, but... Uh, is very similar to the manganese. So just going back in with a palette knife now, adding some more bright green in places. Trying to extend some of the tree line there to make it a little bit more varied but I'm still wanting to keep some of that red from the underlying first layer of paint showing through. I just find that it can give it a little interest. So I don't always start with a red, but because this painting had some green in it, um, I decided maybe that would be a good color as an accent underneath with the green and the yellow and blue. But you can try any color. I mean, you could have used um, yellow on this and, and had a cool effect as well. So adding a few more lines with the skewer. So it's always a yin-yang, the way I paint, going back and forth, adding, subtracting, pushing things around, trying not to get too detailed and up close and personal with a brush. I do try and keep back from my painting. That's another great way to stay loose. So here you can see a closer up of the texture and the layers and the depth that I managed to create by building up a lot of layers in this painting. I hope you enjoyed my 
interpretation of the landscape of the paint pots from the Kootenai National Park. And maybe one day you'll get to visit it. So thanks for watching. Give the video a thumbs up and we'll see you again real soon. Bye.